Happy Winter's Feast, everybody. A new season calls for new celebration. And what better than to journey through what is new within the lovely Don't Starve Together. Right off the bat, we are graced with a new main menu and the Winter's Feast Starver's Carol in the background. But most of what's new lives in the Curio Cabinet. So let's head there, shall we? Sadly, no new snowfallen skins for our remaining survivors, but the originals are still up for grabs. With Wilson, Willow, Wolf, Wendy, Wick, and Webb, nothing but luck stands in your way of looking mighty fine and cold as heck. Get you them skins. No new emotes, but I don't see why you'd ever want anything more beyond being able to carol. It's the greatest thing anyone could do. And the nothing extends to emoticons as well. Which I'm actually quite surprised about, as we haven't had any snow related ones yet. But we do have new frames, starting with the wrapped gifts portraits. You ain't ever gonna know what's inside. You can munch and you can drink all day long with a lovely Winter's Feast foodies portrait. But become too merry and you can be getting buried tomorrow. Festive lights that don't make any dang sense with the character just floating there. Yay, portrait frames always frickin' work. And finally, get yourself a tree that is just festering with festiveness with the decorated tree portrait. There's about 7 million new icons when really in reality there's 15. However, Old ones are still up for grabs too, including some really cool boss ones, so get you some icons. But oh man, my favorites, vignettes. We have our lovable Weber boy wrapping presents for his friends. How nice of him. Wilson looking like he's on the naughty list, ready to turn you into a popsicle. Don't let him nip your nose, everyone. My personal favorite, Feasting Wolfgang. I just love the look on his face behind his walrus mustache, the crockpot behind him cooking up some more, and the beautiful wooded surroundings. Oh, it's so good. Now, in-game didn't see much change beyond things we already knew from last year, but there are a couple things to touch on. However, for those who may be celebrating your first Winter's Feast with us, let's catch you up to speed on some of the older stuff. With the proper ingredients, you can create what are called festive tree planters for your personal use. Using but two poop and one board. They are easy to come by, and the more, the merrier. Craft it, place it down wherever you wish, and now you can plant your own tree within it. Get festive and make more. But head into the survival tab for even more seasonal fares. Scroll down to find Gift Wrap, which only uses one papyrus and a single petal. It's a bloody steal, because each recipe nets you four wrapping. So, what does it do? Well, you'll find that it works mighty similar to bundling wrap, in which you can store items within for safekeeping. But, with gift wrap, you can give actual presents to anyone, anywhere. Better practice your Christmas wrapping. And before you know it, your trees will be ready for something really special. Decorations. Click on any festive tree and you will see that it has an inventory of sorts. But what goes in it? Well, before we touch on that, let's take a look at something very special that is actually new this winter's feast. We gotta all love us some lantern action, yeah? with their super convenient 
portable light source and easy construction, lanterns should be at the top of everyone's Christmas lists when it comes to light. But what if we could take it a step above? What if there was a new kid on the block? Well then, say hello to the Winter's Feast lantern skin, everyone. Heck frickin' yeah. It not only emits a wonderful, soft, blue glow, it has flippin' snowflakes coming out of it. I mean, that's awesome. But remember those decorations? Well, they come as festive barbels, and mobs have a 0.5% chance to drop them during the event. You can also obtain them through the loot stash or through fishing in the oasis with a 1 in 6 chance to get either a plain or fancy ornament. Winter's Feast also comes with wintry foods, and they have a 20% chance to be randomly dropped from animals or monsters. They never spoil, and most only slightly restored attribute like 2 health, 2 sanity, so on. But, check out this table for more info. But there is an exception. The Eternal Fruitcake. Every single character will refuse to eat one. And I don't know what Clay is playing at because Fruitcake is where it's at. But the ornaments get fancier still. Say hello to Magnificent Adornments. They are boss related and unique to each individual boss within Don't Starve Together, ranging from the seasonal big bads to raid bosses like Toadstool or the ancient Fuel Weaver. And some of them have gotten a makeover. The Feast Clop stalks the knight, now shooting frickin' lasers out of his eye. But he does give off a cool red glow now, too. Take him down and get your adornment. Plus, a little something extra, perhaps, as the festive lights have returned to the Winter's Feasts. Currently only dropping through Claws and Deer Clops, they last 160 days, can refuel Minor Hats and such, and give color to Glow Caps. However, the player can fish them out of the Oasis with a slight chance, too. Dragonfly looks awesome with her giant eyes, jingly tail, and some bushy eyebrows. Plus, she turns white with anger this time of year. Remind her that it's the season of cold and get her adornment for your own. Moose Goose is now actually a moose. Or is it a goose? Either way, murder it dead for your own pleasure and serve it up at the Winter's Feast. Last but not least is the Winter's Feast Yeti. Berger himself. Gosh, man, what a good reskinning of a boss. So good, but you'll still need him dead so for his things. So bye bye, Berger. When it's all said and done, head on back home and fill your base with holiday cheer as you place your hard earned and covered in blood ornaments on your trees. If you're wondering why I didn't, cover other bosses like Bee Queen or Toadstool here, it's cause they don't get a makeover like the rest of them. But there is one other boss out there that we should have a visit with, and he is the reason for the season. Welcome to the Loot Stash, folks. The spawn point of Claws, who is usually a winter exclusive, somewhat hidden boss but will spawn all year round during Winter's Feasts, so keep your murder levels high for this guy. He is one of my favorites, so expect a guide on him soon. But for now, put him on the naughty list in hell and claim your rewards. A buttload of presents containing a heck of a lot of random crap, but some of which is wintry feasty, like barbels, lights, and even Claus's adornments. And you can even get some for his deer, too. But it doesn't stop there. We have adornments for Atlion, the Ancient Fuel Weaver, and even the cheeky devil himself, Krampus. 
From the recent event, The Forge, we have new champion adornments from the Grand Forge Warrior, the Rhinosa Bros, and the Infernal Swineclops. From the events most would like to say never happened, we have appeasing adornments from Mumsy herself and Billy. Man, I actually do miss Billy. And there are some quite fancy marbles up for grabs as well, so get you some. But Beard, where's Santa Claus? Well, we have to be sleeping, you dope. You know he can see you when you're awake, for goodness sake. Grab a nap under a festive tree, and a gift or two shall appear. You must sleep in darkness, but the soft light from the festive lights is okay. You'll hear a ringing of a bell, but sadly no ho ho ho. And this mechanic actually has a cooldown of four days if you want a rare gift from the fat boy himself. But take a look at this table for more specific details. Twas winter's feast eve, you know how this goes. We're all gathered round in refuge from shadows. The survivors were snug in their warmest attire. Hungry, but safe and content by the fire. When out of the darkness there came a great war, the terrified revelers were shook to the core. A shiny red orb, like a light bulb it burned. The one-eyed Goliath had somehow returned. The survivors all scattered and took up their arms, fought hard to protect their camp from more harm. Weaving through icicles, they had to move fast lest they get caught in the monster's eye blast. Once the carnage was done, Beast barely defeated, and the worst of the survivors' wounds had been treated. They saw in the snow that covered the ground, trinkets and candy were strewn all around. They feasted on cookies, the cakes they gobbled, their newly grown trees were decked out in barbels. By dawn, they rejoiced to see light in the east, and as one, they exclaimed, Happy Winter's Feast. Well, there you have it, everyone. This year's Winter's Feast event in all its festive glory. There is so much to do, and so go out there with friends and family to celebrate the season. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.